Welcome to the Iron Podcast. The podcast dedicated to making men strong again. <laughs> Welcome, That's Kenny. Cool, man. Yeah. Thanks, bro. It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be here, man. Yeah. It's about time. It's about It's time. about fucking time. And it's the strangest thing to have you here because you and me talk all the time. And just because there's a camera on here, yeah, this makes a whole lot of difference. Yeah. Just uh, it gets it gets into you in a way. Yeah. But I think we can just we you and me just talk like we always do and. Yeah, thank you for saying that. It's um, it's it's weird because like, in a way, the world is watching. In a like, way, yes. Like even if uh, only a couple a couple thousand people watch this, yeah. um, it's like the world. Is and watching. even though it's only you and me right now watching yeah. this. Yeah. Like we we this is for the world. Yes. We're trying to give our gift, our our truth, as yes. um, as uninhibited as possible expressing our deepest truths yeah as, and just at the same time just trying to be ourselves if that's what it, it means you know but yes I mean that we're, we're already some in some way starting to sum up the essence of this book yeah so that's kind of the essence and uh, you and me we have gathered here today to discuss the way of the superior man <laughs> I like how you said yeah. that. <laughs> you gotta have the power in it, you know? Yeah, because, man. Uh, it's power. That's what it's about! Yeah, you know? yeah. It's but like, uh, uh, this is like our Bible, man. Yes, it it's actually is. It actually is. Because it, that book, when I first encountered it, it was like, in some way, the antithesis to everything that I have learned uh, previously mm, yeah. about women. And mm. uh, and even myself as yep. a man, yep. and uh, it was kind of shocking, mm-hmm. almost. It was like, in in in, uh, in perhaps the first glance, you just wanted to uh, neglect the book. Exactly. I, right? I, I just want to say something yeah. because that was the exact same reaction I had. Yeah. The story about the book uh, when I was first introduced to it, yeah. my brother just put it in my hand. This is you received it from your brother. Yeah, my older brother. Yeah. Um, it was like two, shout two out. and a half years ago. Shout out Russell, yeah. head of marketing at Isle. Yeah. Um, Russell, and Russell. I saw the title, The Way of the Superior Man. Yeah. And I just said, are you fucking kidding me, man? I was yeah. like... Well, I was just like, the title, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was um, offended by the title. Even then? Yes, yes. Um, when, when was this? This was like two and a half years ago. Yeah, yeah, so it's not that long ago. Um, and because I associated very negative concepts to just the, the word superior man. Yeah. And uh, along this line, I want to talk about um, what's been happening the past few days uh, since we released a little teaser for the podcast. Um, some people in my social environment um there, there was like a, a discussion that got kind of heated um because of this uh, this podcast um and there, there was a woman that uh that yeah she had to leave uh the conversation she was very upset and we didn't really get anywhere because um she, she was really trying to listen to what i had to say about this whole concept but um she had she was just um, too attached. She wasn't really. She couldn't really hear what I was saying. This was my experience. She couldn't really hear what I was trying to say because she was still hung up uh, on the first uh, word, superior, superior man, and and she was just um, attaching all of these uh, negative concepts to yeah. to this word. Uh, and my thing was like, so like for me is like, how is uh, a strong uh, superior man like superior in terms of like other men yeah how is that um 
going to be something negative. Or perhaps superior to his own weaknesses. Exactly, you know? yeah, to yeah. himself. Yeah, to yeah. To ascend it and integrate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, th this, this woman is like a very outspoken uh, feminist. And um, she, yeah, she really couldn't, gr like, she really wasn't receptive uh, towards um, she got hung, hung up on the word superior, perhaps that uh, men, are, are men superior to women? Yeah, yeah, perhaps, exactly, yeah. and you think about like uh, the patriarchy and men dominating women, uh, when you hear superior man, you, you think, you automatically think of oh, superior to women, because that's like the, the narrative that we have in our society, uh, in Sweden mm -hmm. at least, um, so yeah, it's, it's actually, to be honest, it's been this book has been so dear to me, and it's like really changed my life. It's like the most influential book I've ever read. Um, and I've been afraid to talk about it, um, because I've been afraid of being misunderstood, because I know that there's so much attached to this idea. Um, but now I was like, now that I have um, security in my life, like I have a, I have a, a woman, and I have good friends, and I have a uh, good degree of clarity and direction in my life, I feel secure in myself, now it's fucking time to talk about this in a public uh, way. Because this message is crucial, uh, I think, in Western society, but also especially in Sweden. Why would you say it's crucial? <sighs> this is a... Um, brought up in the book, in the beginning of the book, he like sets the, the context for uh, his idea, and he talks about um, gender roles, and the history of gender roles. Mm. So he talks about like how for a very long time, there's been very separated and um, very firm, clear um, ideas to what it means to be a man versus a woman. And uh, he, he uses the, the typical macho ideal, like the, the, the bully, the, the workaholic, very strong. The old spine, no heart. Exactly. Um, there's a quote that says, uh, it's time for us to move beyond uh, the typical mach macho ideal, but also the, t uh, the caring wimp ideal. Caring wimp, yeah. And oh, the, the, the nice guy. Yeah, the nice guy. That's a good word for it. Yeah. Um, all heart, no spine. Yeah. Versus the macho has all uh, spine and no heart. So the macho ideal um, is like from before, um, like modern feminism and uh, like these liberal movements that started to uh, take shape in the 60s. So before the 60s, like this is just a general outline of, of the history here. Before the 60s, very separated gender roles, um, very destructive in many ways because it's like very black and white. And then with the 60s, all these new ideas, um, society was in a social way moving towards what he calls the 50 50 state. 50 50 state. And that's where we're still at. What's the problem with the 50 50? <sighs> because it might seem like a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. In many ways, it is. Like, there. I, I'm, I can, I can, like, really say that feminism has brought along a lot of positive change. Um, but with every change, there will be new problems. And where ev whenever you make a lot of progress, progress means confusion automatically. Mm -hmm. um, when you make new ground, when you come into uncertain territory, um, there's always going to be confusion. And the confusion right growing now... Growing pains. Growing pains, exactly. Uh, the confusion right now for me is my experience and what I see uh, in, in like my generation and in, in my community and my society is the confusion regarding gender. And we have like a uh, very... Uh, I was talking about this today uh, with, with you know, postmodernism and everything. Uh, where philosophy is used to escape responsibility. We've also talked about this. Um, to escape yeah. responsibility through denying um, limits. Limits. Yeah, and meaning. Yeah, and meaning comes yeah, through, meaning. Through, through that. 
everything is no good, there's no boundaries, no anything. Exactly. Goes. So it, postmodernism is very, uh, very f feminine in that sense. Mm. Like it's feminine, uh, uh, it's not, uh, symbolic. Mm. Uh, but now, now you're touching upon a very key idea in the book. Yeah. Because um, this is <coughs> a spiritual guide. And he is using uh, sexuality as the like means. the the ga yeah the means the the the, uh, the vehicle um, for this information and these ideas yeah. and um, sexuality he he says basically that there are two energies that govern the world which is masculine and feminine energy yeah. so we have to be very clear very clear yeah. that. Um, these energies are not tied to your gender. So if you have a dick, like I have, uh, and I consider myself to be a man, um, then it doesn't mean that I only have masculine energy. I'm no, not, capable not of animating both masculine energy. You, you wouldn't and be able energy. to work in, in, be able to function in this world if you ha didn't have feminine energy. Exactly. There's a ba it has to be a balance, and and everywhere you can see this this um, this beautiful balance. beautiful balance. coexistence, uh, this uh, intermingling, this this uh, this play, this game. Well, that was what Carl Jung said: was uh, every woman has an animus and every man has an anima. What does that mean? That means that every you know, Robert Moore with the King Warrior Magician Lover book, mm -hmm. the archetypal male psyche. Mm -hmm. Uh, he specified there are four pillars uh, that are central to the masculine psyche. Mm -hmm. uh, and the anima then is the feminine archetypes within each man. Uh -huh, uh -huh. uh, and you can go further into that concept uh, with anima, but I think we can talk about stuff there. Yeah, it can, get, it can get messy. <laughs> it's, re it's recognized, it can get messy, and it's, but it's, the point is recognized in various forms. So. Um, thinkers. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. The energetics, they, they symbolize certain uh, elements mm. like the masculine order and mm. the feminine order. Yeah, so like to, to be clear, what feminine and masculine means is very important for this, this discussion. Yeah, we have to and lay out that. Yeah, and we're using the book um, here, uh, so this is not the absolute truth, but uh, as you said, many thinkers um, share these, the, these commonalities. Yeah. Um, yin and and yang, and yeah, yin and yang, for example, and mm. David Dida, the author of the book, uh, he has a lot of uh, knowledge and training in um, yoga, so that's Hinduism, and that's like the oldest religion that we have, and those ideas are um, everywhere in, in that type of practice. So you have this balance, yin and yang, you have the black and the white. Um, the and solid and the soft. Exactly. Um, one very, like easy way to put it um, or like simplified way is that man or n let's not say man let's say masculine um, masculine symbolizes order structure yes while the feminine symbolizes boundaries. yeah boundaries, exactly. exclusion mm -hmm, exactly um, and the feminine symbolizes Chaos. You know one interest, interesting thing about that. Yeah. Uh, where are you finished? Do you want to say something? Um. Well, go ahead. Man. Go okay. ahead. Uh, because I have meetings with uh, with uh, Elliot each week. Yeah. Elliot Holt. Elliot Holt. Yeah. And uh, Elliot said something very interesting mm -hmm. last week. And he said, "I'm going to read to you first the feminine characteristics." Mm -hmm. He, he said openness, mm. empathy, mm. softness. Beautiful things. <laughs> beautiful things. And exactly, you said, you said beautiful things. Mm. And everybody listening was like, oh, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, and that's good. But the point is, and he, he, he then said, because we men in the, in the King Council there all said the same thing about me. Mm. <laughs> that's fucking beautiful. Openness. Yeah. Yeah. Willingness and uh, yeah. yeah. But then he said, 
I'm gonna read to you <coughs> a masculine trait. Masculine. Masculine. <laughs> and uh, and he said, note that each and every one of these traits are now labeled as toxic masculinity. Mm. And he said, firmness, mm. black and white thinking, mm. boundaries, mm. exclusion, mm. ambition. <laughs> exclusion. Yeah. Like, that's a really bad word, especially in Sweden. Yeah. Exclusion. Um, but th th that's the thing also with, because in, in a post to this podcast, we said that, and I've been saying this, and I've been writing this in my book too, the yeah. feminization mm. of society. Yeah. So, because... Uh, when you when you say feminization, you mean you mean this type of uh, trend, right? That yeah. um, these traits that are, in my view, essential to balance the essential. world. Like they they, they, they both need each other. Like yes. you need openness, you need chaos. Um, that's like pure creative. Pure Jordan Peterson even talks about that. Really? But he uses the word order and chaos. Yeah, order. And too chaos. much order is bad. Like in communism, too much chaos is bad. Yeah. Like postmodernism. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, smart. yeah, you have like, Remix. yeah. If you have too much um, masculine, it will be rigid and robotic, uh, mechanical life. No feeling. Yeah, but with too much feminine, you're gonna have too much chaos. Yeah, feelings all over the place. Mm. And you can see this very clearly if you have, um, just for being simple, you have a masculine man, and you have a feminine feminine woman, and they're both living separate lives. And you could you could say that the the they are, they're both feeling lost, right? And maybe the woman is like uh, she's just very chaotic and she is like all over the place, right? And then you could have uh, this is like typical shit. You have a, and then you have a man that is, for example, a workaholic, mm. just like um, so stiff, like he's tight and all In his body. body. Yeah, yeah, his body, man. He's a soldier. You know? Yeah, he's a soldier. He's, he's a just following gender. orders. He's just following the program. And that's like these two extremes. But then you can see if they meet each other and they find common ground and they start to intermingle, then uh, a whole, a holistic um, yes. version of uh, oneness. And that also creates an enormous sexual... Uh, Connection. Yes, if it's the sexual connection that uh, that creates that um, that oneness. Yeah, that holds because they are centered in each one. Exactly. You know, and uh, David Dida says that uh, he, he argues that uh, a man can have a feminine core, mm. and uh, a woman can have a masculine core. Yeah, of course. The, why would you say that, of course? Um, because. <coughs> It's just the way it is. Like every every man, every person that is born in a man's body, is not automatically masculine uh, in his core. Mm. And we uh, like we should be clear about that with the core. Like, okay, you have these two energies. I mean, he can be a feminine man. Yeah, but he's exactly. still he's still a man. Bro, I'm a feminine man. Like, or I would say I have a masculine essence. So I'm more. Um, oriented towards masculinity and like when I'm in my masculine that's when I feel at best but I'm very comfortable in being my feminine I'm a good dancer bro like mm. trust me uh, yeah, I can move, <laughs> I'm loose I can move my hips yeah I've seen um, you and I'm, I'm an artist as well I'm a creative yeah. guy like so um, I'm in very I'm in touch with my feminine side mm. um, and that's what he's talking about in this uh, when he talks about the the first stage the, the very separated gender norm stage and then you have the 50-50 stage he says we have to move beyond that into a stage um, where both um, genders are in touch with both energies within themselves mm -hmm. but that they also can own their their sexuality their, like that, okay, I'm a masculine guy and, and express that and live that truth mm -hmm. um, according to my my environment and to other women mm. you know what i'm saying mm. um and that's what he's saying we, we have to move beyond the macho ideal and the wimp ideal yeah the, the wimp has come through this 50 50 state uh, you, you asked me before but we got uh, derailed there yeah. um 
What is the problem with the 50-50 state? What is the problem with the 50 50? Um, so when we're talking about opposites, we're talking about feminine and masculine, we're talking about plus and minus. They both need each other to create attraction. Attraction is what makes everything go around. It's the glue that keeps us together. It's like gravity. Ex exactly, exactly. That is gravity. It is gravity. It's fucking gravity. Um, and you can, see, you can see this law, magnetism, exactly. You can see this law in everywhere in the universe. In all natural forces, this law is actual. And it, of course, applies to us because we are natural creatures. If you can think in lines with nature, then your thinking is correct. Exactly. There is so there is so much ancient wisdom, modern wisdom. Everything is just according to this way of thinking. Um, so the problem with the fifty-fifty thing is that okay, good. We're making we're making certain a a areas of society more equal, so that um, um, men and women have similar uh, the same opportunities. Um, but the, the problem is when we're trying to make it 50-50 down to the level of sexuality. That's mm. where we're getting fucked. Yeah. That's where we're getting fucked. And that's what has happened um, a co uh, as a consequence to the, the social movement. Yeah. And I have experienced this and I've seen it in other, uh, in other men and women. Um, this, this fear to embrace what you truly are. To, yeah. to and to to not embrace your role. That's the fear of life, man. Yeah, the fear of that's life. That's the fear of life. The fear of life. That you're, is the that is the core of that. That is the fear of life. Yes, fear of life. Because yes. you're you're running from your responsibility. Because you're running away from your role. You're running you you you're running away from yourself. Yes. Denying yourself. And yes. I've read a lot of Alexander Lowen, as you know, yeah, the yeah, father yeah. of bioenergetics. And you guys, if you want to read a book that knocks your fucking head on the grass. Read the fear of life. Mm. Read all his books. Yeah, but basically that, that one you said is this is the most the important one. one. Yeah. And you know that when I think about that book, it's it strikes. Uh, <coughs> I get uh, I get sad. You know why I get sad? Tell me. I get sad because there's not a single one of us. Mm. There's not a single one of us in this modern society who does not carry a deep-seated fear of life mm. and the, the fear of life it, that book elaborates on the oedipus complex mm. and the the basics of the oedipus complex is that it, it is a triangle it tri triangulates the family mm. and i'm going to try to explain this in a simple way that i can here yeah. And uh, you can help me by asking the right questions if you don't understand. Yeah. Okay, so mom and dad does not have a satisfactory intimate relationship. Yeah, yeah. It, it ties a uh, connection to the 50-50, so mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Okay. They, does, that they do not have a satisfactory intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what happens then? But wait, is there is there like um, you said it was tied to the fifty fifty thing? Yes. Like what is the like if you could give me a concrete reason? The concrete reason I'm gonna dive into it. Yeah. B because this is the reason why it's fifty fifty. The problem yeah. Yeah. is, in my contention, is the Oedipus complex. Okay. So we're gonna go in reverse. Yeah. Hit me. Yeah. Hit me. <laughs> and the. the Mom and dad does not have a satisfactory intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. Let's say the man is embodying the archetype of the weakling. Mm. He's a weak man. Yeah. So he doesn't lead in yeah. the relationship. Yeah. And what happens if he doesn't lead in rela the relationship? The woman has to sacrifice her femininity and she has to step up and she has to lead. Mm -hmm. And what happens? They become resentful. The mm. man becomes resentful by being dominated, mm. and the woman becomes because he wants to. He he he's, he has a desire to dominate. Yes. Right. Yes. But th there is the all these words had different um, sounds to different people. Yeah. So, of course, yeah. I'm gonna try to keep all this together, and you you will help me with this. Yeah. Okay. So, you said dominate. Yeah. Which, that's a negative word. Yeah, often. Yeah, yeah. But it, it ties to authority. Mm -hmm. And I've been reading a lot about 
uh, you know, I, I've been, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, Forska, researching all the yeah, religions yeah. and esoteric and psychologies and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. all the shit! <laughs> and, and Word up. <laughs> Word up. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, so Christian, um, the Christian uh, uh, structure of the family mm -hmm. is that man is the head and the woman is the body. Yeah. And that is the natural structure of the family. And mm -hmm. I elaborated on this in my book. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. Yeah. And it makes sense mm -hmm. because in just plain psychology. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if man is the head mm -hmm. and he has the authority to lead, mm -hmm. first question, where does he get his authority from? Mm. That's a reasonable question, right? Mm. He gets his authority from God. Mm -hmm. And my definition of God is the highest of values in the hierarchy of values. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah. is a reasonable definition. That's as far as I can... <laughs> You're trying to define God. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. You're doing a good job. Thank it's, you it's for your work. <laughs> Thanks for your service. Yeah. You know, and it's the closest I can get. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that means, in pure psychological terms, that the man, mm -hmm. he's responsible for everything in the home. Mm -hmm. He's responsible for everything. Mm -hmm. And his mission in the family is to keep order in the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A masculine well, understanding. Why, uh, so in, why is it important for, uh, in this case, for the man to keep the order? Why do we need order Oof. in this context? Let's, let's uh, investigate another myth okay. in the Christian uh, theolog theologically. Uh, theologically. <laughs> you know what we theology theology yeah. Christian theology yeah the first myth the Adam and, and Eve yeah okay what happened there mm. a snake came in <laughs> snakes bro snakes dude and he, the snakes fucks things up and uh, the snake came in and deceived Eve yeah right yeah made her eat the apple and then Adam ate the apple mm -hmm. And the common thing is to blame Eve for that shit. Mm -hmm. But Adam was in charge, yeah. as me and Elliot spoke about. Yeah. Adam was in charge. Mm -hmm. It was Adam's fault. Yeah, yeah he if, has to take responsibility. If he had had his shit wrapped tight... Yeah. Shit on lock. Shit on lock! <laughs> tight, son! <laughs> you know? Yeah. The snake wouldn't have come in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. The snake is the symbol for evil. Mm. Perhaps uh, I think that's a general good thing to say. Mm. So the man is responsible for that no evil enters into the home. Mm -hmm. And if evil had, now it had to enter into the home because it was his fault. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and the problem then was that uh, Eve succumbed to it. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps because the feminine is more emotional. Yeah, because it's more more. It's a more moving. It was beauty, yeah. a beautiful apple. Mm. The feminine loves beauty. Yeah. Loves beauty, yeah. and but Adam then, because he didn't want to lose his wife, mm. he ate too. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and perhaps because if she if she's gone, yeah, what is I won't be able He's to have be sex be no more. Jacking off. He's gonna, gonna be jacking off like a jack off. <laughs> he can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that shit. No, no. You know. Uh, but um, yeah. sorry, you're you're. Thanks for the threats. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, authority from God, uh, why authority, uh, uh, a lot of, why keep order because the snakes? Yeah. Okay, so back into it then. If the man is the head, mm -hmm. uh, he does not get the authority for his own sake. Mm -hmm. That is a very important thing to remember too. Mm. He gets his authority for the sake of his family. Yeah. It's self-sacrifice. Exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. So it's kind of the heaviest burden to bear. Mm -hmm. So that's not heavy a, shit. That's some heavy duty. That's a heavy boat, dude. Yeah. And somebody's gotta carry those boats. Somebody word up David Goggins. Word up David Goggins. <laughs> <word up. laughs> no know? but uh, can I say something? Yeah. Because uh, when when you talk about this, I get uh, beautiful images in my mind. Mm. And uh, my me and my friend, uh, shout out to Eric talked about this um the masculine uh, in oh, a poetic yes. sense the masculine being a frame a frame yeah for the painting like motherfucking donahue <laughs> <laughs> um the frame for the painting 
So for the painting, the, the beauty of creativity, for it to exist, for it to be presented in uh, a manner that can um, make sense, it needs a frame. Yes. And the frame without the, the painting, the creativity, the openness, the chaos, because art is chaos, man. Chaos needs to be contained. Yes, that's, that's art. Like, you're, you're taking, uh, you're going into chaos, unknowingness. You're going into all the shit, and anyone can do that, but it takes an artist to structure it in a way that can make sense, that can communicate some value to somebody else. Um, and that's some deep shit right there. Yeah. Um, and that is the art of loving, for me. Um, that the, it, it comes, this is my experience. Like, now that I, I'm, I'm in a relationship, I accept the responsibility of being the frame. Yes. And Do you like being the frame? I love being the frame. I, I'm the man. I am the frame. I am the mask. I, I am. I am. You're the masculine pole. I'm. Yeah. Exactly. I'm the masculine pole. I'm providing this masculine energy, um, so that there can be a beautiful painting. Um, and um, I fucking love it. It's beautiful. Yeah, your woman loves being art. Yeah, so, yeah, we because are art she, together. She can be feminine. Exactly. Because you, she, uh, you are the frame. Mm. She, she, she feels um, she can relax. safe. She can, yeah, relax she can relax into being in her chaotic emotion yeah. emotionality, which mm. is beautiful, um, and it's it's also constructive now yeah. because we are working together. Yeah. Without each other, we we're, we're like lost. But together. Through accepting our our pole, our role, our responsibility uh, in the sexuality, we are uniting in this art, and that's the art of loving. Like, mm. you, but you have to, in my experience, you have to um, begin from this position of like, okay, this is my role, this is your role. You are better at doing these things. Yes, I think that's a very important thing. Exactly, it's a very important thing. You are doing these things. I'm doing these. I'm better at these things. Yeah. Um, like that's example, okay. Yeah, it's it's beautiful, and that's like the 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 anxiety I feel in society is to embrace that, mm. even to talk about it. When I started to talk about this, um, we couldn't even talk about it. It got too emotional. Um, it's very important to talk about because it's a beautiful thing. Like, and for example, like I'm good at planning. My yes, my, and that's my woman why is. Is not good at planning, and planning is like I'm giving us, I'm I'm creating a frame, a structure for the day or for the project, whatever we do, we're doing. Yeah. I'm creating the frame, and she's like, okay, nice. I feel safe. We have a plan. I know where we're going, so I don't have to think about that shit. I can just think about like, oh, these colors are. I wanna, I wanna buy these colors. I wanna because she's an artist and she's also making lovely food. She enjoys to cook for me. She's, we're in the soup, soup uh, in the in the market, and I'm thinking about the plan. Okay, we gotta make this. Uh, we gotta get to the bus. Uh, how much money? La la la. What are we like? What are we trying to make? How much food do we need? And so she's just going crazy with her creativity. Oh, I want to buy this. I want to buy this. I said, okay, that's cool, but uh, we're not gonna be able to eat all this. So do you want to buy that thing or that thing? What do you think is is better? Because we we have to prioritize. You know, mm. so. I feel joy in that. I feel meaning in this, and I feel that through this uh, interplay, we are we are creating love. We're creating sim sim uh, sim symbios. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think that's the same word. Symbios. Yeah. Symbios. <laughs> yeah. But like, um, like African word. Harmony. Harmony, right? Yeah. You know what I mean, the. The masculine gets strengthened in, in his identity with the contrast of the feminine. Mm, and, and the feminine as well. Versa. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, to tie back just to the, to the with all that you have said, and mm -hmm. or just to tie the knot with the Oedipus, mm -hmm. uh, I think we should go uh, through the first chapter then. Yeah. Yeah. But to tie just the knot in that basket, because we have said many. Many many good things, and I just and uh, you said that with a frame, mm. and once again these uh, symbolisms are everywhere in every tradition, in every you, you know yeah. it's uh, in every myth, and mm. it's it's undeniable. It's the way of nature. It's the way it's of a, nature. It's a law. It's a law, son. <laughs> and that's what's up. 
Sure. And uh, so, to finish the point there, the man is weaving and she has to come to work. So, the, womb, the, the mom then, and this perhaps might sound very terrifying actually, or weird to people who haven't read psychology, but she seeks that unconscious sexual excitement from her son then. Mm. Yeah. No unconscious. Yeah. And uh, what, what happens then is that the father becomes jealous mm -hmm. at the son because he's emotionally mature. And There's the going to be a disconnect between the father and the son. Right? Yes, the yeah. son, the, the father is going to be, uh, it's going to be a tyrant probably. It's yeah. going to, it's going to be hard on him. Yeah. Extremely, Resentful. extremely uh, governing yes. towards his son because he didn't act out his leadership yeah. in his sexual relationship. And, right? blame, and blames it on his son. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps. That's it's some not deep shit. That's some deep shit and it's some terrible shit. Yeah. And, it, and it happens. I would say probably 90% of all. Really? Yeah. Wow. And then I'm taking it low. Yeah. And, but you're always talking about this Oedipus. And mm -hmm. for me, it's kind of, I don't really get it. But yeah. but now, like, I probably, I can start to see it more. Um, but as you said, it's it's unconscious. It's, it's hard to see. It's like, uh, yeah, it's abstract. It, it is. Uh, it took me probably two years to understand. Okay, wow. Well, probably one or two years. Yeah, it's complex you know. idea. It is, but it it actually is simple. But I think that's the problem. The problem is to explain it in a simple way. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So the father gets resentful towards the child. Yeah. Towards his son. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, multiple things happens. Uh, how do you think the son would feel towards his father who's being a tyrant and a weak bitch yeah. in the relationship? Yeah, so he's he's probably uh, the the father. Uh, th thank you for asking me. The father is the the role the, the 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 most the nearest role model to what it means to be a man. Mm. So he's representing masculine. masculine energy. He is the 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 face of that. Yes. Uh, so he's probably going to despise that. Yes. Everything he's going to associate to masculinity is going to associate to his experience with his father. Yes, and that is the. That's why I say and yeah. always and talk about Oedipus a lot mm. because it's the most core wound in all of us. Oh shit! It's the most core wound in all of us, but and that is, I think the manifestation. Now I'm getting ahead of myself, but yeah. as you said, that you sneaked into it. The manifestation today mm. about all men who resent masculinity mm. they're actually resenting their father yeah yeah, yeah. it's a projection of the father if you if you res if you reject your father mm. you reject your own masculinity yeah. and you will despise order you will despise authority yeah. and you you will grow resentful towards it mm. did you have a you sound like you were no to i was just thinking about like fatherlessness Father. in yeah, that's western indeed. society yeah and that does not only mean that there is no father uh, uh, present, yeah. he can be present, mm. but you can still basically be fatherless. Yeah, and that, uh, that's there's also one thing, one one thing more that happens because that mom all bec often becomes close, binding, intimate. That's what it's called, and uh, she ties the son too close to her, mm. sharing her problems, her emotions, yeah. and that shit ain't pr appropriate. Appropriate. <laughs> that shit ain't appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't appropriate, man. Yeah. It ain't. Yeah. That's too close. Mm. That's the conversation she should have with his man. Mm. At least when, because the Oedipus complex occurs often. I think it's between four and six. It starts. Mm. And uh, okay, so and the son feels this unconscious sexual excitement, but he can't do anything about it because his sexuality is still pregenital. Mm. He can't dis he can't discharge that. Yeah. It's too much of a uh, burden, too much energy for too him much to, to channel. For his, to, for his body to, yeah. because he can't discharge it. Well, that's why he's masturbating every He's masturbating like a, a fucking maniac. Bro. But, okay. <laughs> and uh, what happens then is, because he feels this shit unconscious. Yeah. And this is to another word they call a ca castration anxiety. Mm -hmm. That's the fear of the revenge that the father will avenge the Cut son. Cut his dick off? 
Ja. Oh, dat is dik al. Fuck. Dat is om heavy shit. Ja, uh, dope kan mij dik al. No. And that's uh, also a regular theme in uh, dreams. Yeah. If you uh, dream in houses, yeah. that you get your dick chopped off. Really? That's <laughs> never happened to me. Good. <laughs> <laughs> But, oh shit, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, we have the fear of incest, mm -hmm. the, the castration, anxiety, yeah. and we have the re rejection of the masculinity. So, yeah, what happens? Yeah. The boy becomes a really feminine man. Yeah. Because what, who does he identify with? mother because he's close to the mother right he identifies with the mother yeah and um, in that way he, he cuts himself off mm -hmm. he gets schizoid in a way um, and I think in bioenergetic analysis if we're going to uh, assert uh, continue on the point that you are your body mm -hmm. if you're a man yeah you're a man yeah because your body is a male mm -hmm. That's the whole foundation of the bioenergetic analysis. You are your body, the mind mm -hmm. is the body. Okay. So this then, when they grow up, yeah. they can't have a real mature relationship. Okay. They act out this shit in a destructive ways. So, okay. I, I feel like I tied the knots uh, somewhat, but not completely. Yeah, but, but perhaps I think this is going to take a lot of time. Yeah, so perhaps we should um, just... Uh, move on to uh, to uh, the first chapter yeah 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 because we can make a whole podcast about this bro we could yeah it's um first we should read you, have you read through that no first we should read too we can make podcasts yeah about we it should we, we should but for now let's stick to um this this uh, this book right here yes the way of superior man okay so with all this uh, we said a lot of shit Um, sorry guys if we're messy, but we're just trying to keep it real. We're, we're keeping it real. We're being ourselves like we're, we're being just human like we're, we're just not uh, nothing here. Yeah, we're just like having conversation like we, we do. Yeah um, And there's a lot of um, Complex ideas and we're trying to formulate them as best as we, as we can and we're not Jordan Peterson uh, We're stumbling stumbling towards the light. Yeah, and thank you for joining us on this uh, journey so with all this said we With the with the with this prob problematic um, way of um, dealing with gender gender roles in, in society, um, with all we just said, um, this book has really helped us to understand the contrast between masculine and feminine, and he also provides like very philosophical and practical ways of cultivating. Um, this energy, uh, in my case and in your case, masculine energy, uh, to attract more feminine feminine energy. Because as you attract more, uh, your masculinity will uh, start to blossom, and then it's a it's an upward spiral, yeah. uh, stairway to heaven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So we picked out a couple chapters uh, that we thought were most essential in defining this type of uh, masculine way of living. Right? Yes. Um, so, first chapter then. Yeah. I just want to say something. Yeah. One perhaps disagreement that I have with David Diet uh, or that I am struggling with. Yeah, yeah. That is just as we said in the beginning with, uh, with the core. Yeah. Where you can have feminine masculine so core. Th there can be um, uh, a man with a. Feminine core. Okay, That's you it. disagree with that? I'm not sure. Yeah. But uh, I, am, I, I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. But that's, I scary that's scary to say. That's scary to say. That's scary to say. Respectfully, respectfully. Because when I, uh, under my analysis, uh, yeah. uh, bioenergetic analysis, mm -hmm. if we go to the, the core that you are your body, mm -hmm. because perhaps all mental illnesses, in a way, is a result from this connection to the body. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and. If you are your body, mm -hmm. and I'm a man body, mm -hmm. then it is my responsibility to, to represent, and not a res responsibility, but the natural energy in my mm -hmm. body, because I am a male body, is a, a masculine system, because my tes <laughs> testosterone is way higher than a female. You know, I check my testosterone and I have like 
compared to a female is I don't know uh, hard. It is very high. Uh, uh, all this math, math shit, but it's, uh, <laughs> forget the math, man. Uh, I don't know the unit, yeah, but, but I, if I, women I, have one too, yeah. I have like thirty. Okay. Yeah. So that's some different shit. Yeah, but that like I understand your 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 logic there. Um, yeah, and the core is you are your body. Yeah. So yeah, from if you're coming from that angle, of course you will struggle with this idea. Um, but for for me. Um, I don't really pay attention so much to that that whole thing because mm. I just like oh, I just like okay identify with the masculine energy. Teach me how to fucking live as a fucking yeah, man because I'm fu- man. yeah because I started to to see the worth in it. Yeah. And um, yeah, keep going there. Yeah, so let's get started with the actual book. We've been talking a lot of shit uh, as we usually do, but chapter eight. Lean just beyond your edge. And don't fake it. And in any given moment, a man's growth is optimized if he leans just beyond his edge. His capacity is fear. He should not be too lazy, happily stagnating in the zone of security and comfort. Nor should he push far beyond his edge stressing himself unnecessarily, unable to metabolize his experience. He should lean just slightly beyond the edge of fear and discomfort, constantly in everything he does. Let that sink in, man. You're taking it in. That, you look like a good listener when you <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, good shit. Yeah, man. And, uh, you know, Kenny always talks about essentially keeping it real mm-hmm. that tied to personal experience. And uh, I had experience with this yesterday. Mm-hmm. Tell me. I've had a reason calling for my king. Mm-hmm. Your king, your, your inner king. My inner king. Yeah. My being. Yeah. You don't have like a king that is governing you like external no nope. inner king <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point to make yeah. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> inner, like, like your like, king called you yeah. up and like hey man you gotta go and shovel some shit roger that <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. and, uh, my inner king yeah and uh, what that means to me i get signals from my inner king that i should do so mm-hmm. i do them yeah and things work out very good are there uh, those things that the, the king is tr- telling you are those things like often scary things to do yeah yeah or is it like brush your hair no shit no they are most often the things I don't want to do yeah that um, feels me uncomfortable so uh, in this like, specific example what was it this specific example yeah. is that I should go I should be in nature mm-hmm. I should uh, uh, hike and camp and be yeah. out in nature for several days, okay. sleeping in nature, yeah, even talking about trekking this and, 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 uh, and so I said, all right, Roger that. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, that's what I did. Yeah, that's great. That's the respect, man. And yesterday was my first solo trip. Solo trip out into nature. Yes. Yeah, and I met you in the in the tent. Yes. When the fire had died. The fire had died. Yeah. And. All right. So just ho- this whole thing was, uh, this whole thing was uh, leaning beyond my edge. Yeah. Because uh, it's, uh, it's it's still cold here. It yeah. gets in minus ten degrees. We're in Sweden. It, we're in Sweden. Alvika. Alvika, and it's uh, it's it gets dark, like almost pitch black dark yeah. at uh, around five, six. No, now it's like. Yeah, around six. Around six yeah. now. It starts to get dark. Yeah, and uh, so I'm I'm in there, uh, holding the fire, and uh, and I'm un- uncomfortable, dude. Yeah, it's dark. I'm it's uncomfortable, cold. and a big, you know, you, we have a little bitch inside of us, you know, a yeah. little bitch, but it's like there's no shame in going home. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't no shame in that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I said, you know, <laughs> ain't Roger in that. <laughs> Can't do that. Yeah. You know, I'm obeying my king. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I did. Cool. And uh, I leaned into the fear. Mm -hmm. You know, explain that. Just uh, leaning in. Yes. The fear. And that is an essential part. With, I would say, with uh, perhaps with the all spine, no heart, because. No heart means no feeling, mm. and there is an overwhelming, there is an, a feeling that fear. Yeah, that's and a good point. Yes. No feeling. <laughs> Seen doing podcasts, feeling no feelings. <laughs> you know? And uh, there are two ways to go about that. Yeah. And uh, you can, you can, you can detach from feeling. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to do sometimes. Yeah. To do, to do logical assessment. So I, I did both. I yeah. detached. Like, oh, but this is a good place. Mm. I picked this place, and uh, I knew that it was a good place. Mm, you trusted your decision. Yes, and that was one thing more. It's easy to to do a, a de decision to do something hard when you're in a comfortable environment. Mm. But then when you're in the shit, it's not so exactly. easy anymore. Yeah. And but lean into means to accept the fear, the feeling. Mm. You don't resist it because yeah, resistance exactly. means tension. Exactly. And, and you know, tension is premature ejaculation in the long run. Amen. You don't want that. Don't want and that you, shit. And your woman doesn't want that. Can't do that. No man. That's not it's the way of the superior Trust man. Me. Trust me, it's hard. He, he's not pre ejaculating. No man, he's fucking. He's doing a marathons. Marathon. Marathon. All the pussy. Yeah. For hours, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or his balls. <laughs> or his balls. <laughs> <laughs> Got it going on. Okay, so resistance means tension, which means I will, whoop, I will yeah. stop breathing and I will raise my shoulders. Yeah. I'm a bioenergetic dude, so I think about this. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that means I get more fear. So I breathe. <sighs> mm. I lean into mm. the feeling, the mm. fear, which means I accept it. I let it. I let it. Uh, Move your body. I let move my, exactly. Let move my body. Yes. And Paris, my body wants to do this. Huh. Yeah. You know, it was a huh. Can I say a quick thing? Yeah. Paris McKenna, he talked about when you go into intense psych uh, psychedelic experiences into these trips. He said, when the fear comes, because the fear will come, sing. Yeah. Use the, use the fear to sing. So you create something, you, you let the, the energy move through your body, and you express it, and you create something beautiful with it. Or, if you don't do that, it's going to be trapped in your body, and then it's eventually going to take over your head. Yeah, it's going to take over And your then head. your head is going to get so fucking terrified, it's going to disconnect from the body, and that's where trauma and... Psychosis. Yeah. That Terrible is the definition shit. of Terrible psychosis. Terrible shit. The definition of psychosis yeah. is disconnected from yeah. the mind. Body. Okay, continue. Yes, yeah, so I lean into it, I let it move my body, and it, it enters my stomach, it enters oh. my chest, and I just... Nice, nice, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, you know, then I think about it and it's like, all right. I'm in defense mode. Yeah. What if I'm on the attack? <laughs> what are you attacking? Just a state of mind. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, I'm the biggest predator in this forest. Yeah. Prolific. So gifted. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Good. Yeah, Nipsey Hussle, shout out. And uh, the, the cer a certain situation happened that was very... I've never experienced that before. So the fire went out, mm. and there's a massive fog coming in. Oh, this, shit. This is like a movie, man. Yeah. Because the fire dies, and yeah. it's pitch black. I want to have my uh, headlamp, mm -hmm. and there's this massive uh, fog. Yeah. So my headlamp can reach like 50 meters, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I will reach three perhaps wow and then i stand there and i hear because i'm it was a, here at the fire yeah and it was at the by the lake yeah and there's like this this point yeah, here yeah a point yeah the center point yeah uh, after in the in the lake yeah and i hear it's like it sounds like there are like 30 40 animals like ducks or something or some fucking uh, swimming werewolf shit, you <laughs> That's know? more scary than Yeah, that. swimming werewolf <laughs> shit, you know? Hybrid with, uh, with some others. Yeah. And they're swimming there, and they're like running shit, and, oh, boom, shit. Boom, and it sounds like they're running towards me, yeah. and they're backing off, and it's like, 
I'm not over exaggerating. He's like, yeah. Shoo, shoo, yeah. Yeah. and I don't see shit. I, I, I hear it coming towards me like, Hoo. you know, but I don't see it. Yeah. So I take my axe in one hand and the knife in the Just other hand. Just to clarify, you, you were not doing psychedelics. I, I don't do psychedelics. Completely sober. Yeah, I don't do psychedelics. So you grab the knife and the axe in your sober state of mind. Yeah, I'm completely sober. With, this with is the axe. <laughs> this is happening for real. Yeah. So I'm grabbing my axe and my knife, mm -hmm. and this also ties into the confront your fear, because I know I ain't gonna sleep tonight without knowing what that shit was. Yeah. There's no one out here who's gonna save me exactly. if there are these swimming werewolves yeah, that's gonna do it. Yeah, man. Attack me. Yeah. I'm the aggressor. Yeah. I'm gonna find out what it is, mm -hmm. and if it attacks me, I'm gonna kill it. Yeah. You know, so I go out there, like steady, and I, you know, I see the, the bus, you know, that it grows in the lake. Yeah. The it bushes. Moves, the bushes. Yeah. It moves like this, man. Wow. And I l light on it. There's nothing there. Fuck. So I just fuck, like. Under swimming werewolves, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but perhaps it's can werewolves swim. Werewolves. I didn't know. Why didn't you tell me? But I thought it, perhaps it was fish or something, so yeah. I started relaxing. But what kind of fishes can move like you know? Yeah. And then I came closer, and, and what what it was was that it it get it got so cold that the water was freezing before my eyes. Oh. And the waves was pushing. Yeah. The ice, so it yeah. moved and it, it scraped on the. On the on the rocks, yeah. so that's what it was. Wow. No werewolves, no, no ducks. <laughs> <laughs> it was ice, man. Yeah, yeah. Dude. So you you described that leaning into your fear thing. Yes. Like just embracing just the enough. feelings, but still, you're not you're not being a coward. You're not being a bitch. You're going and confronting your fear, but you're doing it with feeling. Mm. And that's not dissociating your exactly. You that's what it's feet. about. Yeah. That's what it's about. And you and I talk about this a lot with leaning into your fear. Um, why like in, in, in modern society we have the ability to escape discomfort. It's so easy mm -hmm. just to um, masturbate, lie lie at home. Uh, watch Netflix. Shitty food. Yeah, and you can just you you don't Drugs. have you can order food food home to your door. Um, you don't have to go through the trials and tribulations of having an intimate relationship. If you're a woman, you can actually buy a kid. You can buy it. You can buy. You know this, you right? Buy a kid. You can buy. You can buy semen, mm -hmm. and with uh, that's not keeping it real. That's keeping it wrong. wrong. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace, Guru. Uh, anyways, that's some weird shit in my point of view. That's not right. That's wrong. That's wrong. That's 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 not empowering but, women. Oh, like, okay. That's that's bullshit. That's not empowering women. For, okay, let's. Okay, we don't have to go into that specific because I'm trying to say something here, but I agree with you. Um, so you don't even have to go through an intimate relationship by a kid so with that said um, you can see especially in young people that you know in, in Sweden you know we haven't had a war in like a, over a hundred years I think made us soft yeah so we're soft as fuck we're really soft yeah and we have so much material comfort that we don't have to confront our fears because it's not like our house is gonna burn down if we don't go and stop the bandits mm -hmm. you know um, so we have adapted and normalized the state of living, um, and instead of like actually doing something important, like doing something of value for yourself right right now in this moment, is going to probably probably entail a uh, amount of fear, like to mm -hmm. in order to make real progress, to make real change. Um, to feel the truth, you have to do something scary, usually. Um, but if you don't have to do that to, su to survive, you can just use your, your intellectual mind, your mm. philosophy, yeah. to escape yeah. that responsibility of actually living and actualizing your potential. Yeah. And what happens then is that you live um, a life of projecting into the future. Or you are 
just daydreaming yeah. or you are just um, looking on at other people living their lives you're looking at um, a hero yeah something. you're looking at a, a, like just shit that will stimulate you um, and you're getting a taste of what it means to be alive but you're not actually living yeah um, yeah and that's the escape from responsibility and I have been a terrible victim of this uh, way of life. Me too. Um, and I'm, a, I'm not a victim anymore. Um, I'm not trying to escape the moment. I'm, I'm, try, I'm like every day I'm trying to embrace the fear in the moment. Whatever and it, it is. It could be small things, you know. It could be like, it's just vulnerability basically. It's just like um, softening your heart. Um, breathing it could, into your balls. Breathing into your balls always helps. Um, if you have balls, otherwise you can breathe into your vagina and uh, that area. It's very good shit. Anyways, um, it could be like a small thing as making a joke at the dinner table. That's a little risky. Like today, uh, with my girlfriend and other people, there was some conversation and I made a joke and everybody was just dead quiet. And they were like, and I'm like, I was, I was trying to be funny. I, um, didn't happen this time um, <laughs> you know and then and then something funny came out of that and like um so what was the joke it was terrible we, we shouldn't even talk about it like and it's contextual so like, oh, yeah. it's yeah, just right, uh, yeah. just i fucked up yeah. but um <laughs> it's like it's like sometimes I, I take my woman and i'm like i do some some crazy <laughs> like some some dash shit or like just try to be spontaneous and funny and sometimes she's like what the fuck man like <laughs> who are you or she could react with um twice as much enthusiasm and yeah. like fucking kiss the shit out of me um because um a woman needs to feel that she can trust you in order to, like she has to trust the frame right and the frame it takes it takes courage to to maintain the frame to say um for example, you have an uh, intimate relationship and there's a scary noise outside of the house. Mm. Your woman needs you to maintain the boundary. Is there someone breaking into our boundary that's threatening our safety? Yeah, and are you going to protect me exactly. and our future or present yeah. children? Because are you man enough to do that? Exactly, because she's, she, you are, you're more fit, fit for that. In most cases, you're <laughs> exactly. that's what's up. Yeah, yeah. Um, it could be the other way around, but usually it's it's this way. Um, so she will be attracted in the deepest sense to your capacity of facing fear. That means that you are have the the ability to be dangerous. You are capable of evil. Yes, exactly. You're you're capable. You're dangerous man. Yes. You're capable of taking taking a risk. You're you're capable of taking lives. Mm -hmm. you, you, you you can step into the ring when it matters. Yes. And in you like to to cultivate that energy, you have to do it every day. This is a way of life. It's not something you try. If you want if you want to be a man and you want to have uh, a beautiful woman, not only in a physical sense, like you want to have a beautiful relationship, you want to experience the harmony of uh, two worlds or two opposites melting together in oneness, you have to embrace this this responsibility to step into the ring when it matters. Yes. And you have to do that every day, cons yes. consistently in everything you're doing. So that's why, like, okay, you can do, like, I, I made this little joke at the table. Um, and these are just small things that are keeping me on my toes every day, on your fucking toes. Um, because then when it's time to fucking rumble, then I'm more ready. And I'm cultivating, like, I'm, I'm getting more skillful in stepping into the unknown, into the fear. And I can uh, channel this. It's like an artist. It's fucking scary to perform your art for somebody. You've been working on it in your room for, like, God knows how long. You've been, you've been making it as good as you can. And when you're playing it for yourself, maybe in your room, yeah, and it's you the go shit. To, you go to an artist school, yeah. so you do this. Yeah, I'm doing this like um, on a daily basis. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a rapper. Yeah, I'm a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> no, so 
Um, you're working on the song, and in your little bubble, it's amazing. Like it, it expl It's like you're you're putting your soul into a song, and it's the most beautiful thing you've ever experienced. Go on a stage, in front of people that are looking at you, and they they're fucking tired, or they're fucking uh, miserable, or they fucking uh, are comparing you to the greatest rapper ever. Um, and you're, you're standing on a stage, and it's a completely different thing to perform your song, right? Because um, it's more important all of a sudden. And uh, I forgot where I was going with this. Lean just beyond your edge. We, we're leaning just beyond our edge. Yeah. And we're stepping and into the fear. And right now you're going about oh, exactly. You're cultivating. You're cultivating this way of leaning into your fear. Yeah. Uh, so when you go on the stage the first time, your your expression will be very different and probably much worse, first much time. more tense, not as fluid as when you were in the comfort of your room. But as you start to get on that stage, step into the ring. On a more consistent basis, and you start, and you've been doing it for a long time, then the 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 flow and the the experience you're having in the room is going to be more similar to that on stage. You're going to be more masterful. You understand? Um, and because it's not scary to perform for yourself, but mm. when you're performing for others, there becomes there there becomes the judge. Yes, exactly. That's you're, what's up. Yeah, you're, you're afraid of being judged. You're afraid, afraid of there's so many things that could go wrong. The audience Rejection. becomes the symbol of a judge that yeah. you are perceiving and is judging you. Yeah. And you get a, a made-up perspective on yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you, you're detaching. Uh, you yeah. often detach from your body yes. in a situation like that's that. That's why you can, you can you get trapped in the mind, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not where great art is yeah, happening. It's not keeping it real. It's, ha it's keeping it wrong. It's, ha it's not ha like... It should just flow. It should be natural from the body. Yeah. And as you as you cultivate this this way of leaning into your fear, you will be able to to channel the the beauty of yourself more artfully, more skillfully um, in these difficult situations. And that's attractive. Yeah. Why do you think rock stars and shit get a lot of pussy? They lean into their fear because they're skillful at doing that. Yeah, and it's it's shown, and like M it mastery, could, mastery, exactly. That's mastery. Yeah, mastery, mastery, yeah. So yeah, I think we can move on to the next chapter. Yeah, you think? Yes. What's Do it the next for love. Chapter, man? Do it for love. It's beautiful. Yeah. Like, why are we doing anything? We're doing it for love. We're not doing this to dominate, um, suppress, uh, women. I'm doing that. We're no, I'm just. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, we, we got a Cut. friendship, <laughs> and no, I'm kidding. And doing it for love, obviously. Yeah, of course. I love women so much. Yes, that's like, if we're honest, why do we do anything? You want to unite. Yeah. Unite in in an embrace. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. Okay. Like pulling a knife in a gunfight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try not to get too sentimental. Um, chapter 9, Do It For Love The way a man penetrates the world should be the same way he penetrates his woman. Not merely for personal gain or pleasure, but to magnify love, openness, and depth. Beautiful, man. One thing that came to mind to me, because I, I have a bunch of jealous mates, Doing it for personal gain. What do you say? The personal gain, not merely for personal gain. Power. What's it? Something like that. Mm -hmm. The definition of narcissism in biomedic analysis is identification with an immaturity of the body. Mm -hmm. So it becomes narcissistic when you do it you know, merely for enhancing your own mental personal gain. Im image. You yeah. know. And when it comes for me, I see that. And, and the model I have in my book is that when it comes from the king, my mm. group is core. Mm. You know, then I'm doing I'm doing it for love. Mm. The king mm. is always doing it. Yeah, for love. you gotta trust that. I gotta trust. And that. That's that's what you practice when you're leaning into your fear. 
Yes. Um, yes, actually, yes, yes. Because you're leaning into your, your body. Yeah. You're not, you're not, it's key throughout. Yeah. Um, so that's very interesting. Like he said, the way a man penetrates the world. It's not like he's only moving through the world. This mm. penetrates is just, again, pointing to the imagery of oh, like, you have, you have the penis penetrates the vagina, plant the seed, life. That's action. Yeah, that's life. Yeah. Right. That's that's the 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 action the the, the natural way of life, yeah. and you can you can see it as you have you're plowing the earth, like you're penetrating the earth, and you're putting your seed there, yeah. and then there's um, a, a plant a fruit something um, that brings more life is coming from this action. So what happens if you're um, like the energy that you are using to plant the seed is going to be, uh, it's going to affect the, the, the end product, right? The, the next stage of life. So if you're doing that um, selfishly, if you're only doing it for yourself, mm -hmm. then the, fru the fruit will, will, will carry that. And selfishness is just fear, basically. It's fear of letting go of your own personal image, yeah. as we're talking about. And that's the opposite of what a superior man does. Because a superior man, as he leans into his fear, he is dissolving all these images of himself. And he's living, he's trusting into the, his nature and his body and uniting. With uniting, the opposite. Is, that's uniting, a word, uniting. Uniting, dissolving, dissolving. You know, ego is dissolving into um, another force, uniting into something more beautiful. And that's the same, uh, for example, when you're plowing, mm. um, with any art that you're doing, right? Like if you're standing on that stage, you're actually in a in a weird way. You're having sex with the audience, and you're dissolving. You're into, penetrating them. Yeah, you're penetrating them with with your with your energy, um, and you're you're planting a seed there. You can say a superior man plants seeds. Uh, plants trees in which he shade he will never sit. In shade he will never sit. Yeah, which means it's an ancient proverb. Mm -hmm. uh, it means if from the beginning is a good man plant trees in which shade he will never sit. Mm. That means that you do something self sacrifice. Yeah, create shade for others. Yes. Yes. For future generations. Yes. And that will inspire future generations, right? Yeah. Uh, leading by example. Leading by example. Yeah. Uh, what the do you have any personal examples yeah you um, example? I was gonna say um, go, going back to art mm. um, so and it ties ties uh, into a lot of what we've been talking about but when uh, when I was make when I started to, to rap um, it was because it was fun and because I was discovering myself through it. It was just a beautiful way of self-discovery. Mm. Um, and then when I started to get older, um, the pressures of like growing up um, and being financially independent um, started to get to me and affect my, my, uh, my way of making music. Mm. So I was just caught up in a self-image of being a successful artist um, that like okay, my my pride was um, was governing governing me because uh, I didn't want to because I was saying to people that yeah I'm gonna make it in music whatever, and I don't want to I didn't want to fail in their eyes, so I continued uh, to make music. Uh, I wanted to make music and I was continuing uh, to make music in order to make a living off music. And it was all just coming from the selfish um, image of myself that I was afraid to let go, like my ego, right? Um, and when I was doing that, like the, just making music was boring. Uh, the music wasn't as good as it used to be. It wasn't as fun, you know, it was just like, it wasn't as effortless. It was just tense and forced. Um, and then, wasn't so long ago I just had a realization that I cannot make music 
to gain money. That can never be a part of um, the equation because it's corrupting um, the, be the innate beauty of it. So with that said, I just, I just realized that, okay, I have to let go of this image of myself that's going to make m money off of music. Because really, I don't, I don't think this is like my image, you know? It's just projections from society. You have to be something. You have to be something. And uh, so I let, I let go of this shit. I was like, okay, I'm not going to try to make money off of music anymore. Is it kind of the grandiosity that we, uh, everyone has? Yeah. Think, uh, yeah. You have, to, you, have to, you have to be something truly grandiose, mm. otherwise your life ain't worth shit. Yeah, exactly. And there are so many options and so many things to do that people get confused out of mm. hell and mm. get into a full about it. Yeah. And... Um, you can tie that into many, many things. Uh, but for example, um, the thing when, um, when, what I was talking about before, that you are escaping the present moment, the vulnerability and the fear in the present moment, because that's where joy is. Yeah. And that's where being is. Being, exactly. And for me, um, I was escaping being in the moment. And for example, just being with my family, I would sacrifice yeah. um, like connecting and doing good things like, okay, I'm not going to help my mom with this thing that uh, whatever it could be like she needs help. I'm saying, nah, mom, I got to sacrifice this time to be a successful artist. You know what I'm saying? Um, or I like just just um, rejecting responsibility in the moment, rejecting like my role. Uh, towards my peers um, in order to to be something in the future in the future yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying that sets you up for depression man yeah and yeah I've been depressed many times you know yeah. and I've been like keep going like yeah it's just like a subtle depression you know that, that kind of thing is very often a defense mechanism against depression you know that we are projecting everything that we lacked in the past into the future mm. and yeah and we, we are unable to be during all this time. And if we reach this event, mm. even then, yet we are not able to be. And then we have reached the event that we're mm. supposed to set mm. us free. Mm. And we cannot even, we cannot even be in it. Yeah, exactly. You know, then you fall head down into the abyss, mm. you know, and I, I have had that happen to me mm. because like most people I think and because we, we people are pretty similar you know mm. it's most personal it's most often most universal mm. word word up <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know I, for me I have had projected uh, uh, the, the I think I projected a lot of things into relationships man mm. that's that's where it goes yeah you know i projected all this what i experienced as the lack of love you know mm. when i grew up you know in certain ways uh into into women mm. and uh you know not only women and, and i lost my ability to be you mm. know and then when i met this most wonderful woman ever you know mm. I wasn't able to be man mm. I wasn't able to be yeah you know you couldn't, em didn't you couldn't embrace the I moment did, I didn't know what to be man yeah. you know well, it, in that way yeah. I, I couldn't embrace the moment you know it's still like trapped in the mind yeah you know yeah and uh, there are many books uh, that, that talks about this and the way this pure man talks about this mm. you know Feel the moment and, and, and be in the moment. Yeah. And one thing for me was, I, in, in, in my grandiosity, I felt that this moment was not, not even good enough. Yeah, man, that you I know? can relate so much to. So that. when I felt the moment, it was like, I'm really not comfortable. You know? Yeah. It's not good I, 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 I would like judge people all the time and say, okay, this guy, <coughs> based on his clothes, for example. 
he's not he's not good enough for me to hang out with uh, because I'm trying to be that thing. Do you know what I'm saying? And you're just projecting love because of your fear. You're not you're not living with your fear. Um, and then then your your actions are not guided by love. They're actually guided by fear. Um, and, yeah. And that's that's the the root of like not doing it for love is then you're doing it for fear. Yeah. It's like there is there is only there's two sides. There's fear and love. There's there's nothing else. You know. Yeah. Hmm. I think there's might be a important distinction there too. You know. The spiritual thing that you said. Mm -hmm. uh, but that does not also mean that. I exclude people. Mm. Yeah. You know? Of course. You have I, to. I'm, 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 <laughs> I have a tight, small circle. Yeah. And my tribe, mm. and basically, that's the people I care about. Mm. Because that is what I can really pra be practical about, mm. you know? Mm. I can really channel my energy into because that's real you know? yeah. um, and then yeah I just want to make that cool yeah 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 I feel it um, yeah do you have anything more to add on that no chapter? nothing more to add on, on that chapter I think we should move on what's um, the next chapter I next? just have a I was going to raise a question have you finished but a question from our audience no I just do want to question to you about okay. how we should do the rest of this podcast because I think we have been doing this for an hour yeah. at least. Okay. But yeah, we, we, we have one, two, <laughs> one, two, we have three more. Yeah, we plan to do three more. Mm -hmm. But uh, perhaps we should go into the question. What do you think about that? Yeah. Um, I think that's a good idea. It's a good idea. Yeah. And if we feel like in the in the end we can uh, connect to it again. Yeah, because but I I rather talk about the, the audience question. Yeah, and I yeah. feel that um, that is perhaps time we should go to the questions. Yeah. Because I feel my energy is is probably gonna last to to take the the questions. Yeah, man. Sure, uh, and we before this podcast we uh, announced we we just made a post where we wanted to involve our audience. Yeah, uh, and so we said that we will take qu questions. Mm -hmm. and we'll try to answer them, or mm -hmm. discuss them. Yeah, and we got some really good, questions. really good questions. Really Shout good. out to the anonymous yeah person, the anon anonymous person. Yeah. Um, and uh, since we live in Sweden, these uh, questions are in, in Swedish, so I will translate mm -hmm. them as it goes. Yeah, go ahead. And if something is unclear, Kenny will stop me. Yeah. And the first question is, on the university where I study, I have met a couple where the balance between the partners is uneven. Often it feels like the man is afraid and insecure to his woman partner and has trouble to express his needs to his daughters. Mm. He gets very passive and the woman is forced in a way to lead, mm -hmm. to take initiative and in decisions. Mm. What do you think this Depends on like, like what is causing this, oh. and is there a way back to achieve balance between the two partners? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go with that, Kendi? Sure. Like, um, but for me, like, uh, it could be confusing with the with the word balance, like to achieve balance again, because it's 50 -50. It, yeah, because for We're me, not I start to think about fifty fifty if you think about balance. Yeah. Instead, we use the word harmony. Perhaps harmony is yeah. that that is what what I think it should be about yeah. we're not 
if we're going to fifth, 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 perhaps this is also a reason. Fifth fifth might be a reason for this. He, you know, yeah. the man is afraid because he, perhaps he's a feminist and you know he is. He doesn't want to step on his toes. And he's yeah, yeah. Going to that, do the right been, thing. That, that's been my case, like in the past relationships. I've been, yeah, af- I've been too, afraid to, to live out my, my masculinity. Yeah, me too, because of feminism. Yeah. Because I was taught that I'll, I am toxic and that I, exactly. if I don't check myself, yeah. I will... Your dick is dirty. My dick, my dick is dirty. <laughs> it's yes. a poisonous dick. Yes, and I have to check myself to not... Yeah, no, yeah. but I've been, I've been, I can relate to that, to that situation. Where you become passive. Yeah. Um, and then what happens is... Um, that the woman has to animate her masculinity yes. in order for there to be any uh, any movement. Yes, and like sacrifice directed movement because we need directed movement, especially in today's society. And um, she will the 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 attraction is fucking dead. And There's no the sexual no attraction. Right what is the way back? Um, for me. Um, way back man like for me it was like in, in the case of my, my my past relationship um i had to get out of the relationship um because you see yourself through other people and the closer you are to somebody the more you're going to see yourself in that person so if you've been with a person intimately for a long time you're a big part of your identity is tied to that person in that relationship um so for me, I had to get out of the rela- relationship to find my my seat of power again, to, to find my 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 true being, like to not be tangled into um, all the associations I was making uh, to myself in that relationship. Um, oh, where's him? Yeah. You do have water, can you? Of course, bro. Always have a bottle of water. Yeah. Um, so he talks about this in the book that um, you can you can like recharge your masculine energy in solace um, or in solitude. Sorry, uh, being by yourself, meditating, you know, and just finding 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 your your flow and your your path. Um, you can also do that in company with other men, and we were gonna get to that chapter. Um, but yeah, the yeah. importance of having other men yeah. uh, that are honest with Enjoy your friend's criticism. Yeah, yeah that's, that a, that's a chapter. But um, to like to have uh, a friend. A brother. Yeah, to, to, like, to like, okay, how does this look from the outside? Um, An objective lens. Yes. A more objective lens. Yes, yes. Um, but, but, okay, we're talking about, like, pra- I'm trying to be practical. Um, but... Yeah. If if this guy is talking about like uh, somebody else's situation, um, the first step is like that the you have to like the the couple or maybe just the, the guy has to realize that something is not as it should be. Yeah. You know, like he, th- this is not the the way I want to live my life. You need to do when you've accepted it. that you can make a change. Um, but then you have to see that, and it's very difficult to to grapple with those types of ideas, especially in a Swedish university. If you, mm. if you're in that um, field and of that ideas, is infested with feminine femi- feminists. Yes, and there's like a lot of um, extreme shit, man. Like yeah. it's disgusting. Like it's um, true, it is like it's my, evil. Yeah, my ex said like, and and like she was angry and emotional. But she said, like, the, the only thing that men are good for is uh, for sleeping with. Uh, just fuck them. And then they're, they're not good for anything else. And she is, like, currently attending Stockholm University. Yeah. And, like, that... Feminists would applaud her for saying that. Yeah, like, uh, not everyone, but for sure. For yeah. sure. Like, that. that's... It's not a bad thing to say, like, you know, um, in, in, in many circles. But if a man would say... Would have said it. It would have been, it would have been, chastised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's the way it is. Um, but yeah, so it's difficult. It's a difficult situation, like just to to, 
if he can like get to that conclusion by himself, like maybe for re- for reading this book or like getting some I- external uh, input, joining a men's group or something. Yeah, like yeah, just like just exactly to ground himself in company of other men. Yeah. Um, like if he even comes to that conclusion, then to speak that truth forward and to act it out. Um, that's a whole other step. Yeah, he needs to take the the lead back. Yeah. This is what I'm. This is what I'm seeing, and this is what I'm going to do about yeah. it. And uh, th- like Adam and Eve, mm. this is what I'm going to do about it. Yeah. And I- if you're going along with it, mm-hmm. then perhaps we can find harmony. Yeah. If not, we can't keep going yeah. this way. And that's, that was, Boundaries. That was my situation, man. Like. It was just not happening. It was just too much um, collective and emotional baggage uh, that I, I couldn't deal with it like in my current state because I was so weak because I had been out from my true power and my, my, my nature too long. So I had to I had to cut the relationship. I had to like, find solace. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, so I was, I was alone, bro. I was alone for a long time. Good. And making songs and just like exploring myself with myself, and so yeah, that could that could be a way. But yeah, if if so you know so- the truth, you have to speak it. So if yeah. if he knows the truth, this is wrong. Fuck me, like I don't want to live like this. Then like to just just to sp- say that, just to like to say that difficult thing to a person that means something to you, um, that will set set the the the, the ball rolling. And then, like, just trust in that truth. That truth will guide you into opportunities that probably will be scary. But trust and lean into those uh, the, yeah. the fear of that opportunity, and it's gonna lead you to something something new. And like, I'm I'm a big believer in not trying to make stuff happen all the time, uh, but just to surrender into into being into being into the moment and uh, leaning into that fear. Okay, next question, man, because we're getting tired. Like, let's, yeah. let's be real here. We're human beings late. Yeah. And my feet are cold because I don't have socks on. And I'm like, why don't I have socks on? You're not used to go barefoot. No, I'm not. I'm not a uh, Wim Hof. My uh, feet are become immune to cold. Yeah, because you're a real man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. You know, yeah, but I used to run in, in the snow barefoot. Yeah. I, yeah, you told, you told me about it. Yeah, but I think this is a very y- usual, you know, nice guy syndrome. Yeah. That if I do what I think that you want me to do, I will mm. be a true and you will love me. Terrible, it's terrible pleasing. decision. And that is disgusting terrible, to me. Terrible, terrible decision. Women man. hate weak men. Of course, man. Nobody wants to have a child with a weak man. No. But it, this also is what I think is the, with the feminist doctrine it teaches men that if you like if you're a man then you're being toxic mm. but then if you adapt to the feminist doctrine and being a nice guy the wimp wi- no spine you're being wimp and women will reject no you no spine no spine who's going to carry the frame if who's going to carry the boat spine who's going to carry the boat ain't nobody and the woman might try it but she she will resent it. But th- if she's gonna do it, then if she's gonna like go like spend the most of her energy to go against what she actually wants to do, yeah. who's gonna paint the fucking painting, man? There's gonna be no painting. It's gonna, it's gonna be an ugly painting. Yeah. At best. But and I think it's become it might become also you know, with the fifty fifty it becomes power struggles and then mm. uh, toxic fights. Messy. Ugly painting. Yeah, you ugly can painting. summarize it. Ugly painting. When men are not allowed to be men and women are not allowed to be women, and they're trying to be in a relationship, there will mm-hmm. be power struggles, yeah. and that yeah. goes back to the Oedipus, you know. <laughs> that I yeah. Can I just say something that like, um, like I don't understand because okay, feminism wants to make the world a better place, and um, it's a it's a good intention. Every idea that wants to make the world a better place, it's a good intention. Um, but a consequence of this movement, as you said, like just like um, extremism and um, like toxic, like categorizing um, natural masculine behavior as toxic, 
um, in in many ways. Um, like, how is that gonna make? How is like shaming someone's natural behavior? How is that gonna make the people more happy? That 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 is the only social construct here. If we they talking about social construct, mm. that is the social construct. Yeah. And the only thing that turns against itself is an autoimmune disease. Yeah. It, that's some. That's facts. That's facts. Why? That's facts. The only reason one would turn against the self is because. Yeah. One exactly. had experienced pain when mm. one were being that self. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, like when you in the Oedipus, you receive pain from being mm. a girl, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that right got broken. Yeah. So the unconscious attitude becomes later in life. Mm. Why should you have the right to be a woman exactly. when my right was broken? It's, it's, like, it's like if you go on the stage, you're an artist, yeah. first time, and you, they boo you off the stage. Yeah. And you, you say, okay, I'm never going to make a song again. And then you fucking get an accounting degree and fucking work in an office, suck dick all your fucking life. And you're fucking the ass. And then when you see some, some a, a beautiful artist um, performing, you get a hate. You get a yeah. hate on that shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's happening. And so, so what I wanted to say was like... Um, if if I can, if I can be strong, if I can accept my role as the frame, mm. so that my woman can be a beautiful uh, flower. flower in the, in the frame, um, how is this hurting woman? Or how, like you know, how is that hurting woman? Yeah, feminism like, is hurting women. A, so a strong man is gonna support what is feminine. Course. It's gonna support that and power. vice versa. A strong woman will support a masculine man. Exactly, and then you have the stairway to heaven, man. It's fucking enlightenment, like dissolving your ego in 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 that embrace, yeah. and then harmony will will come from it. You know, feminism is called feminism, but it actually isn't. It isn't for femininity in women. That's, that's it, interesting. It, the, the the it seems like feminism is like trying to make women more masculine and men more feminine mm. that's some evil shit that's se self-hatred that's it's, what's up it's scary and i understand that it could be um translated into into that that logic that you're making there yeah okay next question man because you know we could talk so fucking long yeah. about this and we apologize if we're all over the place but we're doing our best we're trying to keep you on point yeah for you for love we're doing it for love did you guys have a turning point mm. where you realized you want to be other men mm. than the man you were once? How did you see yourself mm. compared to now? Is this book, honestly, like I said, I, get, I, will, I became conscious of what it means to be a man. And... Um, what was the question like? How? What was the turning point? And the how do you see you, yourself? The per turning point when you realized you want to be a, another man mm -hmm. than you were. Yeah. And how did you see yourself then compared to now? Um, so it's one. Good as question. Yeah. One thing like w with denying my sexuality, uh, before like I read this book, uh, it was like I was afraid to, to, act out my sexuality towards other women. Yeah, me too. Like I even with my girlfriend. Yes, bro, yes, me I too. I was scared to take sexual initiative. Yeah, and because I didn't because I respected her. Yeah, yeah, that's that's bullshit. <laughs> you know, so much bullshit. Like, um, if I if if okay, I love this. I'm I'm I'm, I'm in awe of this beauty, this woman. Like my whole being is. You want to ravish her, bro? I want to fuck her. That's what I want yeah. to do, and she wants me to fuck her. Yes. She wants to, we want to fuck each other but um that was associated with something negative it's like okay i, I was so afraid of making her feel um like if i that i would cross a boundary and be and be um called a dominator like, or yeah a dominator like or just like because i associated that behavior with taking initiative and like just taking the lead and, and yeah. 
like fucking because well, you've been told that was wrong yeah exactly that like in school in this growing up all the, the circles that um i was in and i wasn't even like i was just i was like no i had normal i was like hanging with dudes like dude dudes mm. uh, and then i was like when i started to when i was like 16 whatever 15 then i started getting introduced to these to these ideas and they really uh, had a hold on me really scarred my mental yeah Sure, sure. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I was just um, afraid, like, just to approach a woman and, like, just to say, like, wow, you're looking beautiful today. Because that would be sexual harassment. Yeah. Um, Getting you paralyzed know. by doing something wrong. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the fear of life right there. And yeah. The fear of not leaning into that fear. So that's the type of guy I was. Um, it's now, being propagated, so it's not strange. Yeah, no, like, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not a victim to that anymore. Like, um, I can with confidence say that I'm, I'm living my life. I'm expressing my nature and my truth. And a good example um, that shows, like, how I view myself differently is uh, last summer, I was at a bar. I saw a beautiful African girl. Um, and I just said to my, I, I looked at my, my, my friend, and he said, you have to go. Like, we didn't even exchange mm. words. Just said, you have to go there. And I went. And I said, hello. Uh, my name's Kenny. And you are very beautiful. Would you like to come and sit with us? And there was a, a weird uh, situation. Her friends were like, oh, you're not going to take my friend from me. La, la, la. Mm. And uh, I said, like, hold up. I'm appreciating your friend. And I want her. I want to to talk to her and get to know her. Um, and if you don't want to come sit with us, that's fine. Um, but I'm sitting there if you want to come. And they came, and I started talking to this girl, and um, we met again. And she was she was like she had been living in Sweden uh, for the majority of her life, but she was from Burundi, <coughs> Central Africa, and she was completely amazed by my. Uh, she thought I was courageous that I went up and, and spoke to her. Yeah. Um, and she, she said, like, in, okay, Swedish guys, they're soft. They're so soft. Like, nothing is happening. There's no action. Like, nobody is, is actually acting out um, their, their desire. And it's fucking frustrating. Like, of course it is. It's frustrating. Like, the, she starts to think, like, is something wrong with me? Like, yeah. is my ass not big enough? Or, like, uh, like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so she said, like, Swedish guys are wimps, man. Yeah. And she, she's tired of it. But she also said on the other side, just the, the, the balance of it, like, in Africa, um, it, she said, it's too much. Like, that, that's the other side of uh, the coin. Like, okay, well, where she came from, guys were, like, just harassing her all the time. Of course, you can overstep boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, but she said, okay, you had a good balance. Like, you, you were respectful. But you were also very clear and 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 uh, directed. Like you were, you t you told me what you wanted, and you you owned that. You owned your nature. Um, led to some good ass sex, and uh, just like a nice time. Uh, didn't lead to anything else. But that that's just like that was two dates, um, and it just shows like okay. I can live my life like that. Before I was just afraid. I wasn't. I wasn't mm. even going up to talking to a girl, man. Like, I wasn't even dancing many on the floor. Many guys struggles with this. Yeah, many, especially uh, here in Sweden, I think. Yes. But yes, many, many, many men struggle with this. You know the the Gillette commercial. Have you seen it, bro? Yeah, you, you talked about it and uh, you That's showed me showed me some of shit. disgusting shit. Yeah, and one scene it is. Uh, a man sees a yeah. beautiful woman, man. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, yeah, yeah. He's gonna, he's going to talk to her, mm -hmm. and he's bro. He's like, it's not cool, bro. Uh, we don't do that. We don't yeah. do that. Yeah, it's not cool, bro. Like, like what is what wrong? the fuck? What is wrong? If if I see somebody beautiful and I want to uh, appreciate that and get to know them, yeah. How is that? How else is anything going to happen? Yeah, nothing is yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. That. We, we can talk about that too. Yeah, crazy that's shit. crazy <laughs> shit. What, um, on your side, like, um, what could you say the transformation was? You're going to grab
gradual process. Mm -hmm. There are definite, uh, definitely some turning points, you know. Um, for me, you know, I was a completely different guy uh, back in the days. Mm -hmm. I was weak as they get, man. You know, mm. I was, you know, so traumatized from when I was young. Mm. You know, I had all the shit. You know, PTSD, depression, mm. and you know everything. And uh, I just, I was forced to dig. As my life depended on it, because it did. Mm. So you know, I read books and I read book after book. I probably read, you know, about two hundred books from the library. Mm. You know, and that's why I just read and read and read. And I, I had to fix myself. Mm. And um, gradually, things started to. First, I just read shitty ass books. Yeah. I believe when you're starting to read books, you just you you read shitty ass books <laughs> until you realize. What a good book is, mm -hmm. um, but the most definite turning point for me was uh, with a woman, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked, yeah, that that's in the archetypal uh, myths. That's that's what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's a saying: "There's a problem in a man's life, where is the woman?" Mm. You know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's always connected to sexuality. Always so. connected to woman and sexuality. Yeah. And uh, this is a woman. Woman, I, I would love to death, man. And uh, I fucked that up because mm. I was weak, mm. you know. Yeah. And I didn't. Uh, I feel like I was the the guy, you know, almost that they described mm. uh, earlier. You know, I was packed. Yeah. I didn't leave mm. and uh, I, c I couldn't be and I was mm. anxious and I wanted to do the right thing you know I'm mm. what do you want to do so oh jeez man you know mm. what do you want to do what do you want to watch I want this I want this I want, I want this, this. <laughs> <laughs> you know okay then. just to clarify it's not a bad thing to ask uh, your partner what they want to do uh, but that's just like the, the typical uh Way, you know, the, the you're allowed you're allowed to ask once in a day <laughs> and uh, yeah so uh, that shit that, that ended you know and uh, I realized that man I am the weakest motherfucker mm. God ever created yeah seriously so I'm the you're, you, weakest you gain consciousness yes accept and as you were talking yeah. about earlier you have to accept you have to realize I mean, we talked about the first question says seek solace then accept yeah. and then the yeah. decision and I realized man I'm weak as they get yeah and um, you started to talk to your shadow yeah dude yeah. it was dark yeah dark as they get you were alone I was completely alone man completely alone. you know and that's uh, when you started writing around uh, the uh, book yeah yeah that that was about in the same time yeah and uh, I knew I, I have learned many things up to this mm -hmm. point by psychology, mm -hmm. but this thing I did I, I hadn't learned. So I the book was my I wrote the book while I was transforming, you know. Mm -hmm. And one way I was transforming, as we were talking about earlier, was exposing myself mm -hmm. to pain and suffering yeah. daily. Getting in the ring. Getting, Getting in the, the ring. Stage. I was fighting to the last the blood drop, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I every morning I went up at four o'clock, yeah. or and uh, I I did some nasty shit, you know. Went out running for uh, <laughs> nasty shit. Yeah, running for yeah. many kilometers, taking ice cold shower, yeah. you know. Torturing yourself. I was torturing myself yeah. for hardening yourself. Hardening myself for five months straight, yeah. and. Uh, in, in large way that is what transformed me man yeah fuck you know because before I was so feminized that I was so emotion uh, I was controlled by my emotions I was very emotional mm. I just want to sit in a mode all the time yeah I feel it mm. 
and this mm. there, there is so much to talk about and you man should be feeling mm. but you know I have I have good um, I know my emotions already I'm in contact with mm. them you know you're not governed by them I'm not governed by them and actually they say men should talk about their feelings more mm. I don't believe that's necessarily the case, yeah, you know. Yeah. And they they say men suffer because they don't talk about feelings. That's bullshit. Men suffer mostly because of lack of meaning. Mm. Meaning is the oxygen for a man's soul. Mm. And um, that was the turning point for me because I didn't want. I saw myself mm. such a weak bitch. Yeah. And I wanted to become the hardest motherfucker ever created. Yeah, you were pretty hard, man. Stay wrecked, dude. <laughs> Stay erected, guys. Um, <laughs> no, but um, I hear what you're saying. It's beautiful. But at the same time, I'm not completely with you on the men shouldn't talk about their feelings type shit. I'm not meaning ex- also, you exclusively. Know, no, yeah. we should, but we should not sit in the mode all the time, you yeah. know? Because I, I because feel... Because that's the feminine That's mode, the like, feminine. Yeah. I, I feel so much better when I'm not in feeling. Yeah. When I, I can get, I can be conscious, you know? Yeah. And when, uh, when you're not governed by your feelings. Yeah. Because you, you have to live with an open heart. Like. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, uh, you gotta, you gotta balance those. Yeah. You know? And I, 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 I like order. Yeah. I like boundaries. Yeah. I like discipline. And I like to push. Mm-hmm. And these penetrate. Are, yeah, I like to yeah. penetrate. penetrate. And I like walls. ambition, you know? And these are all things I was taught that are, are bad. Mm-hmm. I need to discard those mm-hmm. things. That, discarding those things made me weak. Yeah. Next question. Right. Last question, I think. Ne- ne- two more. Two more? Yeah. Okay. Oh, this ties to what we were talking about. Oh, how do you see discipline versus motivation? Uh, are we controlled too much uh, by motivation and feelings today? Mm. Um definitely too much like too much feeling and i'm not too feeling yeah or like just in general society we're just talking about like escaping um es- you don't have to be uncomfortable escape escaping uh, the present people think moment. i'm crazy for exposing myself to discomfort voluntarily hmm. i think it's very necessary if you've been living a life where you not had a lot of discomfort like you have to there's a debt of discomfort that you have to so it could be a yeah, it's a debt of it, yeah, <laughs> I was doing the same thing like yeah. for me it was a lot with through art and like through doing through doing artist like exposing myself mm-hmm. being vulnerable through art suffer mode yes and I, I also did like um, like physical exercise and stuff like that for me like had had the same effect as you described but I haven't <laughs> Been as extreme as, as you, you talk about, like the marathon. Barefoot. Or, yeah, and you broke my barefoot. Broke, mar- broke you, my never, legs. you never run ran a marathon before. No, and you I, did I, it barefoot. I only ran 10 kilometers and then I ran barefoot and I broke my legs yeah. and went to and work. That's, re- that's, on that's crouches. like, excuse me, but that's retarded. Like doing some shit like that. Yeah, but purely athletic, it is retarded. Yes, but you, you had to do that because you had like this debt yeah. uh, that we're talking about. Um, so yeah, sometimes like you gotta do shit you don't want to do, and that's like the discipline, like being committed, like okay, you do it, um, no matter what, like you, you, I, I'm committed to this, and that's like carrying your frame, you know. That's very masculine commitment. Yeah. And um, if if you have that, if you if you can carry that frame, um, then a woman will trust you, a, w- a woman will trust you, and like because. That's the whole thing. Like, if she can trust you in your frame and and be that be, uh, the, the 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 painting, mm. then we have a a picture like a, a unity. Yeah. But if she you're not if you're not holding your frame, she's not gonna be able to be that picture. And mm. if uh, she's not in her feminine and like allowing you to do that shit to be the man, then mm. she can't be in her like she can't be part of the painting and it's just gonna be ugly as we talked about before so yeah like i i believe if you're a man that's you you're more oriented towards 
you got to be more disciplined. Yes. You, know? you got to be more disciplined. You got to keep order. You got to stand for the discipline. Yeah. Like because you can't do everything. You can't do, you, you can't you can't do it alone, guys. I think that's like yeah. the, the 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 moral of the story. Like you can't do it alone. Nope. And that's like um, with our society creating individualistic uh, society where like like you can you can be alone if you want to. You can buy your own food, you can buy your baby. But why, why? would you want to do that? It's not beautiful. Strong independent woman, you know, they say. Yeah. But that's I see it as weakness. Yeah. It's fear. It's fear. It's fear based. Yeah, it's fear. It's fear. For sure. Uh, and if you're run by fear, you're not doing it for love, and that's not keeping it real. That's keeping it raw. Word it up. Word up. Next question? <laughs> what was the question? Yeah, I just want to say also with um, um, the, how I view discipline and motivation, mm -hmm. because I, I learned very much of this while I was doing my self torturing. Mm -hmm. Motivation is crap. Mm -hmm. It's fleeing. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's a do feeling. You, do you think, yeah, it's a feeling, it's yeah. not a commitment. Yeah, yeah. And do you think, you know, that I felt motivated at four o'clock in the morning, having like two hours of sleep sometimes mm -hmm. to get up and run this crazy distance and do the push ups and do the pull ups and yeah. have these ice cold showers? Yeah. I hated that shit. Yeah. You know, but that was what's was keeping me real. Yeah, I had to get you back on track back on track and I think in a lot of ways the way a man is suffering in responsibility mm. and a discipline is commitment mm. that I'm not feeling it that's not a fact yeah your feelings doesn't yeah. matter yeah. in the commitment and discipline that's interesting because um, instead of motivation purpose because purpose is that will carry you yeah purpose will carry you and that's also a very masculine trait uh, purpose. Purposeful. That purpose is that that the uh, direction, and when you have purpose, uh, you're committed to your your purpose, discovering your truth or whatever it could be. Um, that's where discipline is born, and that's where discipline mm. yes. is cultivated yes. and survives. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yes, like and and for mm. you, like um, you found purpose in in that situation. Like that commitment was tied to your purpose. Um, yes, that you wanted to love. Yes, like you 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 felt the pain of um, of fucking up uh, your 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 romantic intimate relationship. Yes, of you 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 had love and then you you lost. I it. lost it. And then you had okay, I have to find purpose to 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 get back to that yeah, love. I have to find yes exactly. You, you tasted the love. You tasted the love. Yes. You took the pill of love, and then you couldn't go back. Yeah. So then you had to. That that's what actually kept you yes through through uh, that discipline. An important thing about about that two things I think about what mm. you said. Um, the one thing that was when when, when that happened, mm. I didn't go. You know, I, I could put the blame on everybody else. You know, but that wouldn't do anything. Mm. That was it, what it was. Extreme ownership is about. Yeah. So it, this is all my fault. Mm -hmm. You could blame society and all that shit. I could blame my woman. Yeah. Yep. Being a little yep. weak yep. bitch. Yep. You know. But it was my fault. Yeah. And what am I going to do about it? Mm. How how am I going to take care of this problem? And this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I'm going to do it, and that's what's up. And uh, with the purpose thing, you said it very good. Discipline must come from a man's heart to begin mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. otherwise he will just throw himself into the abyss into the depression yeah you c like without that purpose you're going to be lost ambiguous confused um, confused weak. yeah you cannot the, like what the the, the 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 food for your frame is the purpose that's like the the that's like the the why like the why yeah. why should I even maintain this frame? And then when you have that why, it will nurture your discipline. That's why maintaining the frame, and like, m like just uh, cultivating that responsibility. Like I am this frame, and you do that every day for your discipline. Okay, I'm fucking going to the gym now, because I gotta be strong. No matter what I feel. Yeah. And that's why purpose must come for the relationship with the ideal. I said. Yeah, and we to keep didn't the frame. have time to get into that, but yeah. 
Exactly, exactly. And yeah. that's what that's actually going to attract. Um, yeah. Attract more. Friends. And they can trust you. Yes, they can trust. They won't trust you if you're um, not prioritizing your your purpose. If you're not leading into that fear on a daily basis, trying to discover uh, your purpose more deeply. Let me take the two for the one. Some. Some. <laughs> uh, last question. Yeah. Who um, are the male role models you will recommend to young men who would guide them, uh, who seek the guidance and strength? Mm. For me, um, right after I read this book, I came across, or was it uh, around the same time, uh, I came across Elliot Hulse. Elliot Hulse has been my, uh, I grew up without a father and never really had a good father uh, figure in my entire life. But Elliot Hulse is like my main, my main father, my main man um, in that sense. He has, um, he really, he's, he's like my ideal of what it means, like the, the energy that, that he gives, uh, that he gives me. And uh, like, okay, now he's, uh, he's gone in some direct, he's been saying some shit that I don't agree with. Um, that's good that uh, we can disagree. Um, but just for me, the, the big thing was, when he, because he introduced me to bioenergetics, mm. I don't know what it was until I uh, saw Harry Holtz, and so his like perspective of like he's coming from the, the the angle of the body. He's talking about the body, the body, the body, and before I was all all up in my head, man, and so just through through like I believe that our society is we are so up in our heads and we're disconnected from nature. And we're disconnected from our own body, and that's that's like that's just the fundamental problem here. We're talking about like fundamental to the people, like sexuality, the body, and we're, we're talking. Who the fuck cares about outer space, bro? Who cares about outer space? I'm right here, two feet on the ground. What do we have to work with right here? Like, Practical. Yeah, finding our way back into the body and taking one step at a time, mm. not daydreaming, projecting into the future, and actually feeling that fear because that's that's what tells us that we're alive. Yeah. And Elliot Hulse taught me about that. So um, I don't want to just drop names all over. Uh, I just think Elliot Hulse um, and then uh, hip hop. In general, just listening to real ass hip hop. Gangstar. We've been quoting Guru um, this whole entire podcast. Nipsey Hustle, for example. That's like some good masculine energy. When you wanna, when you wanna uh, refuel mas masculine energy, and you're sitting, you're on your way to work, play some Gangstar. Mm. Moment of truth. Yeah. Um, that album, man. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. What about you, man? question mm. and if you if I wanted to answer this question completely I would have uh, like t taken my time to write yeah, down yeah. but on, on top of my mind we have Elliot Olds yeah uh, we have Jordan Peterson man. oh I forgot we have Robert Bly check out the book Iron Dome that is one of the best books for masculinity out there mm. man mm. Um, Alexander Lowen. Mm. Yeah, I have that. That's it. On top of my mind. Yeah. I think uh, that's enough to get into. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm feeling. I'm feeling that. My energy is up for this podcast. Yeah. And I feel that our we made what we were supposed to do here. Yeah. And uh, I want to thank you, Kenneth. You're a newly appointed director of operations, the IONS. Yeah. 
organizational genius. <laughs> and uh, um, a fantastic uh, uh, irreplaceable asset to the team. Thank you, man. Uh, we couldn't do it without you, man. You bring so much value into this team and uh, with your organizational skills and how you coordinate between the different teammates, you know, and uh, shout out to Russell. Shout out to Russell Hustle <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the guys, Jimmy and uh, Norbert and uh, yeah. all the team. And thank you for coming on, yeah, brother. Man. I hope we can uh, continue, and just uh, yeah, thank you for uh, providing this opportunity, man. Carl has uh, put a lot of work into founding this, this uh, creating this foundation, basically, of what Iron is, and uh, we have a purpose, and uh, it's strong, it's like a strong, strong purpose. Again. So that's what's going to carry us, like, yes. um, and that's what's important really at the end of the day and our, our form is going to get more sharp and more yeah, refined we're learning, more solid we're stumbling towards the light yeah and and our our well for what i've been talking about all the time is like let's show that process let's not try to project it in the successful mm -hmm. image yes. let's just show who we are in this process of trying to discover our truth yes and say what we think out loud and see what happens, see how it's receptive. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm very curious to see what people have to say about this podcast because we said some controversial shit in many people's uh, we'll ears. Be upset. Um, and that's, uh, that's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. And I that's very actually fine. welcome it. I, I, I can say that. Yeah, now I'm, I'm welcoming. Oh, I felt, I felt the fear felt the fear when I said that. I'm welcoming all responses. Um, and we'll see what it, what what is real will, will survive, basically. Yeah. What is real will maintain. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's it for this episode. Yeah. And uh, be sure to subscribe if you like our content. Uh, like and uh, share. And uh, comment if you had any thoughts on anything we said. Yeah, please yeah. comment. Like yeah, we want to involve the audience. Yes. you know, and discuss in the comments mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. And until next time, uh, stay erected. Stay erected, guys. I'll go home. <laughs> Jerk off. Peace.